Let's continue on with adding fractions. Again, the rule has to be you must have a common denominator. The bottom number has to be the same. Well, it's not. One's a three and one is a five. So again, ask yourself the following question. Can I enlarge the smaller of those two and make it the bigger number? Nope, I can't enlarge a three to make it into a five. That means I must enlarge both of those. Well, what do I enlarge it into? Well, and some of this is just kind of gut feeling and stuff. You might have learned along the way. I hope you did somewhere. If all else fails, what you can always do is, in, is multiply these two, that makes 15, and make that the common denominator. So that's what I've got to do. Now, again, what did I do to the three to make it into the number 15? Well, times five, right? So multiply this times five, that makes 10. Without putting a little multiplication sign, you got that, right? Or what do you do to the five to make it into the number 15? Well, multiply times three, right? So let me show you. If I multiply this one by three, I multiply this one by three also. So this becomes 15 here, three times three, that makes nine. See what I'm doing there. I enlarge this into 10 fifteenths. I enlarge this into 9 fifteenths. And by the way, oh, it gets all complicated. I could have put these two numbers, 2 thirds plus 3 fifths, up and down. I can do that. Then I would have done, whatever, the way you put it on paper is not a factor. I just chose to enlarge this out to the side and left side, enlarge this out to the right side. As long as I know I'm doing this, plus this. I'm not doing that yet, but I'm showing you how I'm getting there. Or I could have done the same thing here. So let's see. I need 15. Let's see. How do I make a 15? I can enlarge this by making that times 5. Enlarge this, making that times 5. And make it that way. See? So the way you put them on paper doesn't matter. As long as you keep track of what you're doing. So whether it's left and right, up and down. Let me say again. You can enlarge this. Up and down. Multiply this times 3, this times 3, make this into 9, 15. So either way, I'm doing 10 fifteenths plus 9 fifteenths. Since I've now got a common denominator, which is 15, I merely add the two top numbers. 10 plus 9 is 19. So the answer, well, not the final answer, but an answer at this point is 19 Fifteenths. And of course, can't work with that. We got to convert that into a mixed number because you can't leave it as an improper fraction. So here we go again. 19 divided by 15. Well, 15 goes into 19 one time. So there's the whole number. One. One times 15 makes it a 15. When I subtract that's four. So that's the remainder. I keep the same that four. Keep the same old denominator. One and four fifteenths. What a goofy looking number. But double check. One times fifteen is fifteen plus four. That makes nineteen. Nineteen. I'm right. <laughs> wow. Another one. Isn't this fun? Five six plus three fourths. Now they don't have the same denominator. I've got to make them the same. Can I enlarge the four, since that's a smaller one, into a six? Well, no, I can't. Now I could keep with me on this. I could multiply the two, four times six, six times four, and that's a 24. I could make that my common denominator, but I don't need to. Can't I enlarge both of these into the number 12? Yes, I can do that. I guess some of this is just gut feeling things you've learned along the way. You could use 24 as the common denominator, but the lowest one you can use is really better. So I'm going to enlarge both of these. I just move them off the sides. I can enlarge this into something over 12, enlarge this into something over 12. Well, what do you do to the 4 to convert him into the number 12? Well, I multiply him by 3. That makes him a 12. Well, I multiply the 3 by the same number, 3, to make that 9. 
So this three-fourths became nine-twelfths, nine over twelve. Well, what do I do to the six to make him into a twelve? I multiply by two, make the twelve. Then the top number demands equal treatment. I have to multiply him by two also. That makes 10. So it's now 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths. Now, it, I didn't make it up this way. It just happened. That's a 10. That's a 9. I, that's a purely coincidental. Believe me, I'm not lying to you. What's 10 plus 9? 19 over 12. But again, you have to convert that. Going too fast for you? <sighs> Take a breath. 19 divided by 12. We've got to convert that to a mixed number. Well, again, in our heads here, if that works. 12 goes into 19 how many times? One time. With how many leftovers? Uh, about seven, right? And keep the same denominator. Now, if you want to put that down and go 19 divided by 12 and show it, that's okay. But you might be getting the hang of this already. Double check. Always double check if you can, real simply. 1 times 12 is 12 plus 7. That makes 19. 19, 12. There we go. We got a good answer. Now, what you'll also see sometimes in the book, yeah, doing the homework, there are three of them, maybe four, all strung out. Well, one half plus two third plus one fourth is the same rule. You have to convert all of these to have the same denominator. What's that going to be? Well, you could multiply this times this times this and get a big number. Hey, what's the number you can use that they can all be enlarged into? What's the smallest denominator you can enlarge all those into, huh? How about 12? I can enlarge. Let me say it again. Here, I did this out to the sides, this is below. It doesn't matter how you do it. I'll never see what you do, just get the right answer. So what do I do to a half to make it into something over 12? I multiply two by six to make it to 12. So one times six. I hope you're seeing or listening what I'm doing here. How does three become a 12? By multiplying by four. So the top number times four also becomes eight. How does a four become a 12? By multiplying by three. Multiply the top number by three also, that makes three. So now it's six twelfths plus eight twelfths plus three twelfths. Same rule, just multiply. Just since I got the same denominator, add the top numbers. 6 plus 8 plus 3, let's see, what were they then? It must be about 17 in my calculations, huh? My feeble brain. What's wrong with that number? I've got, that's an improper fraction. I've got to convert to a mixed number. Again, you want to see it done. 17 divided by 12. 12 goes into 17 one time. So that's the one's the whole number. So I multiply first, 12, then subtract. Leftovers of five. Keep the same old lousy stinking denominator, one and five twelfths. Double check. One times 12, 12. Plus five, 17, 17, 12. Hey, I did it right. I think I did. We've got a lot more to cover now on adding fractions, but we're getting a little bit deeper as we go. You're thinking, boy, that's deep enough already. No, it's not. So work on this. We got it. You got it. Of course you do.